All right, so we currently have a server service, a widget service that is exposing a data model, right? That's a, that is, is a, a returning to us a um, an array of widgets, and so let's take a look at how is it that we would consume this from the client side, right? From the client side, we, we might might have a, uh, a an Angular uh, client, right, and a service that might want to consume the data that uh, we are exposing here on the uh, client side, so on the service side, right? Uh, so last week we uh, we had uh, we had a, a a client here, right? We had the um, uh, Angular Column Navigator. Um, okay, so we I guess we didn't create an Angular for uh, for this uh, project. So let's create it here. Let's uh, let's see where we are. And so we are in the server here. So let's go back. Right, so we have um, we have the Angular Column Navigator that we were, we were playing around uh, last week. Uh, let's uh, let's now. Uh, we, I guess we could still use the Angular Column Navigator. Um, that one was uh, was was fetching uh, courses, right? It was fetching modules, and and, um, and it was but it was communicating with who? It was communicating with the uh, uh, with the Java RESTful services, right? We want to build something that communicates with uh, with our brand new. Node and our, our brand new node server, right? So let's uh, let's do that. Uh, let's see. I guess we can use this uh, Angular Column Navigator project. Let's open that up. Open recently, so Angular Column Navigator. All right. Let's see what we have here. Uh, we can uh, navigate there. So Angular Column Navigator, and if we run it, npm start. Oops. Um, tell the other. Uh, hmm. npm use ten, maybe. Okay, right. Well, I had the wrong version of Node. Uh, so it's serving at, at 4200. Let's uh, navigate there. Let's see what uh, we have so far. Let's see. We have a uh, local for, uh, 4200. Right, I noticed that probably that course is, is not rendering. Uh, because it's trying to hit our my Java server and my Java server is not up and running. All right, so let's uh, let's leave that for now. Let's uh, let's focus on on, uh, on on playing around with the with widgets. All right, let's play around with uh, with widgets here. Uh, so let's um, let's see what we have here. Uh, we have our Angular application. We have our entry point, uh, which is uh, let's see our app component. Which uh, tries to render our app course navigator. There it is. In our app course navigator, is is implemented right here, right, which is trying to fetch the courses and whatnot. Uh, so let's, let's leave that for now. Uh, let's uh, instead focus on see if we can hit that um, uh, that widget uh, service that, that's implemented on the server. All right. So let's do that. Uh, so we'll need a component for this. Uh, so let's build a brand new component. In the same directory, and let's see if we're in the right place. Okay, and we're going to say ng uh, create a um, uh, ng uh, what was it uh, ng generate a component, and we'll call it um, widget widget list component. How's that? So it's going to create a new component, and it's going to put it under the app directory. Uh, let's see. Uh, where is it? There it is, widget list. Uh, and uh, for now, in the app component, let's abandon the navigator for a second. Right? So instead, let's play around with the, uh, with the uh, widget list that we just created. So this would be app uh, widget list. There it is. So if we... If we uh, visit that, notice that we no longer are listing the, uh, the, the the courses or anything like that. We are listing the widget list works, right? That's the default content uh, of all components, right? 
uh, which is uh, which uh, you can you can find it in the in the HTML of the component. There it is. There's there's our widget list works. See that? All right. So in here, uh, we're going to try and render a list of widgets, but that they li live on the server side, right? We want to go fetch them and render them here. Right, so let's try and do that. Uh, so we'll need a couple things. Uh, we'll we'll probably need a uh, a service to go and fetch some data. Okay. Uh, so let's uh, let's implement that. Uh, let's see. Do we already have a service here? Uh, no, we don't have a service. Uh, so let's uh, let's implement here in a directory called services services. Right. Notice here's where it starts to get confusing, right? Because we have a services on the server and we have a services on the client. I right, want to make sure that we get we get everything straight, right? That, that we have the server over there sending data from the server, whereas this one is consuming that that data from the server, right? Right. Uh, so so in our services, let's create a, a kind of like a sister file to the server uh, version of this, right? But we need a client side version of this, right? So let's uh, create here a file, and this will be a um, a widget widget dot uh, service dot client this time around, right? It's uh, it's not it's not a, a, a server side. So this is the this is the um, right the class version, uh, the 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 um, uh, the TypeScript version of this that is running on the client side that wants to go to the server and fetch data. Okay, uh, so so I think I have one of those here in one of the slides. Uh, yeah, so let's create this uh, this service. So let's do um, uh, export uh, class uh, widget service client. Okay, uh, and uh, one of the things that we'd like to be able to do is do a, a, a declare a, a function as find all widgets. Right. This find all widgets. What we wanted to do is go and fetch the widgets from the from the server, right? And so to do that, we're going to do fetch like we did for React. So no no difference there. So this will be fetch. Uh, it's going to want to go where? I think we have the uh, the example here. There we go. That's where we want to go. So I'm just going to copy that. So go out in the local host HTTP 3000 API widgets, right? That's going to return a response, right? Return response, which we're going to parse. Here's the response, which we're going to uh, respond uh, parse uh, the um, the JSON out of the body, and that's going to be our return. Yes. Okay. Uh, once we have that, we want to be able to use this in a, in a component. Right. We are using the component, to, but to do that, if you remember, uh, services need to be declared. Right. They need to be declared. In the modules, right? Remember that last week we declared another service, uh, a provider, right here, the course navigator service. Remember that, which uh, which fetch data from uh, from our course, from our Java course. Right. So it's uh, this is the implementation, right? Remember that this was the find using the fetch, right? But this was going to the Java uh, uh, um, controller, right, to fetch all this data. Now it's going to go out to not 8080, it's going to go out to 3000, which is implemented by our node server. Right? We can have them running at the same time. Right? That's, that's fine. Right? One is listening at 8080 and the other one is listening at 3000. Right? One can be reading the courses from one server and the other could be reading from, uh, from uh, Node.js in another, in another port. All right? Uh, right, so, so I'm going to declare that widget service, widget uh, service client, there it is. We declare that. Uh, and so now in our widget list, in our component, in our component we can make use of that, of that service we just declared. Right? We can inject it here. We can say uh, private uh, service is of type uh, widget service client. There it is. Right? Now we have access to that service. We have access to that service. We can now call it. We can say go fetch me the uh, the widgets. We can say this dot service dot find all widgets. That's going to go and regenerate an HTTP request. Right? It's going to go out to the remote server. And it's going to return the widgets. Right? Once the widgets come back, 
we want to declare them locally here and, and store them in a local variable here to make them available in the view. Right, so we need a state variable here that lists all the widgets. Now, initially, it's an, it's a, an empty array. Right? Uh, and uh, once this finder method comes back, these are the actual widgets, which we can, um, which we can assign to our local widgets variable. And, and remember, any variable declared on the component is a state variable. It's a variable that is available from the, from the template. Right? So that the template could perhaps, if this is an array, even iterate over this right? and, and generate uh, the, the content from, from that array. Right? So, uh, so if we go to the component right? and we, we, um, uh, we generate a UL, Right, we can do a uh, class. This is a uh, list uh, group, and um, and then we're going to generate an li for each one of these uh, of these widgets. And so this will be a list group item, uh, and we're going to generate this. We're going to generate. We're going to say, uh, I'm going to iterate ng4, and I'm going to declare a local variable called widget uh, that um, uh, of the widgets from the widgets list array that I, I fetched from the server, right? Uh, so, so this, this, this widget I can now render and just uh, uh, render the, the title. I forget if this is a title. Is there a title? I forget. Right, and there's no title. Uh, this is fail. Console, uh-oh. Um, Oh, of course, yes, because one the the um, the Angular side is running on 4200, uh, but the uh, Node.js is running on 3000. Right, so the browser is blocking me, saying, "No, these are from two domains. Right, you can't do that. You can't access, a, you know, having been the JavaScript having been downloaded from from 4200 cannot access uh, data that comes from some other domain in 3000. So let's let's configure that next.